welcome back to Crafters TV. Welcome back to an amazing Craft Along. Uh, it's fast become one of your absolute favorite shows because what we're gonna do is focus on a recent launch that so many of you already own and all craft along together in real time, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. I know you guys love it as much as we do. And I am not here on my own, oh no. Uh, she's looking very oriental today in a gorgeous blouse. The lovely Debbie Robinson's here. How are you, Debbie? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, you know, I really love craft along. It's one of my favorite shows. I think that we ever do here because it's a chance for us to do real time crafting from start to finish and I absolutely adore this show and even more so because I finally, finally got my hands on the most fabulous, gorgeous oriental collection which is the Chinoiserie, absolutely beautiful by Nature's Garden. Do you want to see what you're going to be making oh, today? Oh yes please. Now, I've given you a couple of options here because I've done one in black and one in white, well I say one in black and one in white, in the cardstock right here but we're going to make this beautiful dome shaped front card. Um, using possibly one of my favorite stamps i think we've done in such a long time which is those beautiful birds they're absolutely gorgeous we've got that gorgeous frame in here the papers are just to die for they're absolutely exquisite uh, so we're going to do one of these now it's up to you whether you want to do do you want to do black do you want to do white i've given you the option of one or the other it's entirely up to you but you're going to end up creating this beautiful project and you can see that lovely dome feature there which just really does bring uh, the the whole of this collection to life absolutely cannot wait to get stuck in with you mm. all this afternoon now i know it looks like oh it's very um it's a really stunning project but debbie assures me it's actually quite a simple concept so make sure you stay tuned it's still not too late to gather your crafty bits and bobs together and join in with us on the craft along so let me take you through everything that you're going to need for today's craft along uh here it comes so you will need uh, the chinoiserie frame beautiful birds the temple the oriental lanterns and the 12 by 12 paper pad you will then also need the black mat or white stamping card the textured cardstock pastels or brights some nina uh tri blend markers and then some other additional elements from your stash uh, those being the guillotine score master gemini craft knife uh scissors foam pads uh your all-purpose glue an alcohol proof ink pad and also some gems as well. Now, not only have we got Debbie here in the studio with us, uh, we do have a very special guest too. Uh, I know that uh, on the line, we have uh, the wonderful Susie T. So uh, let's check in with Susie T. Hey Susie, how's it going? Hi Joe, good to see you. Oh, uh, unfortunately, I can't hear Susie at the moment. So we're gonna come back oh, to you, no. Susie. I'm sending you love from across the pond. Stand by. Uh, I know you guys can okay. hear her at home. Uh, I'm going to, shall I just, let's, should we just, I'll just ask Susie, are you excited to be crafting along with us today? I'm very excited. Oh, I'm so glad oh, to I'm hear so it. And have you got all your bits and bobs gathered ready to go? I'm ready to go. I've got everything oh. ready to go. Awesome. Well, it's hard to believe that you wouldn't in that incredibly well-organised craft space you've got there, Susie. I'm going to be coming back to you real soon. I'm so excited to see what you're going to make as well uh, as we go through this show. Now, maybe a lot of you out there are thinking, my word, that's a gorgeous project. I'd love to be able to make that, but I don't yet own the Shrinazri collection. It's not an issue because we've actually got uh, the bundle available for you on the show, which is fantastic. So what you're going to get in here is... I mean, it's like the pack. I'm gonna. Do you know what? I'm gonna get the. I'm gonna. Oh shot! Oh no! Shall I? Oh no! Oh, oh. <gasps> but uh, I'm gonna take this off here just because I want you to see it. I think sometimes it just deserves to be flicked, doesn't it? And this is definitely one of those paper pads. Look at how incredibly gorgeous these are. It's a double A side. Do you know what they're like, Debbie? It's like when you go to a really, really fancy shop. Yes. where they sell all the super expensive wallpapers. Ah, yes. oh, it is beautiful. Chinoiserie meaning the Western interpretation of 1800s Eastern culture. Uh, so lots of significance running through here, lots of symbolism as well. And I think that the card pad or paper pad really sets the tone for just how gorgeous this collection is. I love that you've got those little temples and pergolas. Uh, you've got the cranes in there too, some dragonflies, some parrots. It's a really beautiful mixed bag when it comes to the designs and the colours that you are going to receive in there. Will I knock that over before the end of the show? Probably, yeah. Uh, right, let me take you through uh, the rest of the collection that you are also receiving. I, the, 
it's a really brilliant deal for when you see what you're getting for your money. So in here, you're going to get the chinoiserie frame die first. A really beautiful, beautiful, intricate die, but also has this awesome shape in the middle there too. And that creates a beautiful topper, should you wish to use it. We've then got in here for you this amazing embossing folder. I love the floral elements that you've got in there. Those floral elements are going to work and play beautifully with this, which is your peony reef stamp and die. Again, I love this one because you can really make this quite oriental, but you could just use this uh, as a plain floral if you wanted to, away from the rest of the collection. You've then got your die cut toppers in there as well. The love birds are what we're looking at here. Again, if you love your colouring mediums, maybe it's uh, your watercolours you want to use with those, you can get some brilliant results. I do love that you've got the Chinese symbols in here as well as some uh, English sentiments in there too. And you've got embellishments in there as well. And then this, I love this. And this is one of the uh, designs that you see running through the whole collection. It is gorgeous. My absolute favourite element, paper pad aside though, of course, are these the oriental lantern stamp and dies use the stamps on their own use them with the dies we split those dies down for you as well so it means that you can cut them out the left side the right side or you can just totally remove them from the cardstock all together it is a gorgeous gorgeous collection the price i think is amazing uh, for what is our most recent nature's garden launch uh, platinum members you can pick this up for 43.99 in the uk or $71.99 if you are in the US. Platinum members in the UK, you're actually saving more than you're spending compared to buying the individuals alone, which I think is absolutely awesome. What I would also say to you is that I am your servant today when it comes to uh, the craft along. So if there's anything that you want to know, anything you need repeating or recapped, I'm here, uh, I can do that for you. Any questions you've got, Crafts TV on Facebook, Crafts Companion on YouTube. What I would also say uh, is that we will take regular breaks as we go through. So if you do drop behind a little bit, don't worry, we'll recap at the end of each step and then we'll take a little break so we can all make sure uh, we finish together, which is the aim of the game. Judging by the comments though, Debbie, it looks like everyone's pretty much ready to get crafty, I'd say. Ready and raring to go, are we all? Fabulous. So, what have you chosen? Have you chosen black cardstock, black cardstock, or the white stamping card? Or have you chosen something else that you fancy having a dabble at making this dome card? Well, first things first, you'll need two sheets of whatever your chosen cardstock is. You'll need yourself a guillotine. Now, don't worry if you don't have the larger guillotine. You can use a craft knife and a craft ruler to create the sizes here. Um, of, for obvious reasons, I use my guillotine quite regularly. And it's one that I use time and time again. And I do like the big one, I'm afraid, because it's the biggest one we do. And it gives me that ability to use it perfectly with 12 by 12 papers and things like that. So I've taken some matte black cardstock because I'm going to go with the black version of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut um, one piece of this down to 10 inches by 8 inches. So on the um, landscape side, you're going to take this on. And I'll just move me uh, down there so you can see that a little bit better. I'm going to measure this along now if you are extending like I always say make sure your arm is extended properly so it snaps into position and you've got the little leg uh, firmly down there to give a nice even straight ruler you take it up to that 10 inches bearing in mind when you're using your guillotine keep your cardstock flush up to the very top so no gaps because that will affect the size when you're cutting it so we're going to cut that to 10 inches and then we're going to turn it onto the portrait side and we're going to uh, do the same here but now at eight inches so again up to the very eight inch mark flush up to the very top of the guillotine hold your finger gripper down and slice to create that perfect 10 by 8 size now with the second piece and um, what you're going to do for the second piece is you're going to cut this down to eight inches by eight inches. So it's a simple case of doing it exactly the same way but this time we're going to eight inches we're taking that down and then we're going to do exactly the same on the portrait side and we're going in at eight inches so what you'll have ended up with is two pieces of cardstock that you have one at 10 inch by eight inch and one at eight inch by eight inch and this is going to form the back part of your dome card this is going to form the first part of your dome card but we need to put some score lines in so using that 10 by 8 piece of cardstock i want you to bring your scoreboards in whether it be a big score or your score master we're going to use the inches side again and this time what you're going to do is use it to the butt of the left hand side of your board 
Make sure that's nice and flush down there. Take your scoring tool and we're going to score this at one inches and two inches on this side. So we're going to go in at one inches, top to bottom, two inches, top to bottom, a couple of times to make sure you've got a nice um, break in the fibres of your cardstock. And then you're going to reverse it and do exactly the same on the other end. So we're going to take it up to the left hand side of the board and we're going to score at one inches and two inches. So that's now we'll have created ourselves some score lines in that will form the part of the front part of your dome card. Now, I'm not going to do any scoring at the moment or doing any of the burnishing like we would normally do because what we're going to do is we're going to place the first part um, to create that lovely aperture using one of the dies. Um, but we're, we're going to do that and then we'll do the scoring afterwards. The reason being is if you do all your burnishing and keep all this burnished and get it into its shape, what happens is when you pop it through your Gemini is you flatten them all back out. So it's a waste of time. It's just wasted energy. So that's the, my little top tip there is don't do the burnishing afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. So there were your measurements, Joe. So simply uh, 10 by 8 inches, scoring on this side at 1 inch, 2 inch, reversing that around 1 inch, 2 inch. And then your other piece is the 8 inches by 8 inches. That is going to form the main part of your card. And then we're going to do all the decoration and that die cutting element as well. So I'm going to go and grab my die because I think we can, we can literally get this first part underway. And I'm going to use the um, chinoiserie frame. I hope I've said that right. You have. Oh, I say so. And that's such a lovely Congratulations. word. Congratulations. <laughs> so <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to use, because it comes in two parts, this beautiful frame. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at the design on there. It's absolutely exquisite. But we're not going to use the outer frame. We're just going to use the inner part because what I want to do is create an aperture into that 10 by 8 piece. So all we're going to do now... So just before we move on, sorry, Debbie, oh, I had a question yeah, coming from Monkey Head Bonkers, which is just such a great username. Uh, oh, she says, are you scoring at one inch and two inch on each side or opposite side? So, I mean, if you should end up Perfect. with them on either side, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just recap that again. So we've got the 10 inches by 8 inches. Left-hand side of the board, scoring at one and two on that end only. Then completely turn that around on the opposite end and exactly the same one inch and two inches awesome thank so you so in turn what you'll end up with if i just put that in there is you end up with a six inch by eight inch piece these are going to form the part of your door at your dome at the side okay Brilliant. excellent got that thank you perfect right so going back to that frame what I want you to do, and the easiest way to do this if you want to centralise it, is fold those two little bits underneath for the time being, and then you can just place that so you can see a manual. Because sometimes when you're looking at it and you've got your, you know, you're looking, it, it gets a little bit confusing you're to flat, try and get that's it. That's what you want yes. to say, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, thank you. You can Joe, say because that's what they're called. Yes. So just tuck them under for the time being. <laughs> Took them under for the time being, and then you can centralise so that you get that part really nice. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take some low-tack tape, and you're going to secure that down. But we're not going to run it through the machine just yet, because we need to unflap the flaps, if that makes sense. Of course okay? it does. So that, and it gives you a clear indication. Another little top tip, pop it on the inside of your frame, especially with low-tack tape. If you're anything like me, sometimes it can go a little bit skew with, and I can end up pulling a little bit more off than what I actually wanted. Uh, so just pop it on the inside of the frame, because we're not going to be using that middle piece although it does cut out a beautiful frame but then before you run it through your Gemini just take out those two side flaps there so that you're not getting those die cuts because that's the last thing you want to do and then we're going to run this through our machine Joe so I'm going to grab in my plates now this would fit through your Gemini Junior as well as your larger Gemini if you're going to do your Gemini Junior you would just pop it in this set and I'll just show you what I mean so I can grab your a plate to visually show you just in case you haven't got a large Gemini, you can see that that frame fits perfectly. Oh, okay. What you would do is you would place it onto the centre of the plate. Don't worry about this overhang. It doesn't matter because that's not going to get damaged you in the machine. You can just feed that through. Yeah, just keep those free. But because I'm using my larger machine, I am going to use my large plates for this jaw. And I'm going to pop that on. 
There we go. I'm just going to make sure I've still got that nice and central. It is a thin metal die, so it's a thin metal die combination of your plastic shim, your magnetic shim, and your other clear cutting plate. Obviously, with your blade facing down, cut it into your cardstock, and then just pop that on and run that through your machine. Awesome. Sally says, is, um, Sally says you've got, you sound very posh today, Debbie. I sound very posh. I sound very posh today, yeah. It's me, it's me very edge cold. <laughs> It's made you, it's turned you into, it's turned you into to, uh, a very regally spoken lady all of a sudden, apparently. Have I gone really posh? You've gone posh, yeah. There you are. <laughs> uh, Shadaya saying, thank you, Debbie, as always, your instructions are very clear, which is nice. Uh, it is, oh, well, yeah, do you know, that's the whole point of the craft along, because sometimes when we're doing demonstrations, we can rush things and we do do things quite quickly here uh, but it's nice to do these craft along so that you can do it and follow that instruction from start to finish Absolutely. which I just love and I mean look how beautiful that cuts out of that frame it's just absolutely exquisite it really is and you can see that beautiful oh, it's it just such a lovely frame Joe. beautiful detailing it really, really is. is but what's also lovely is is that you've got this lovely piece here that you could use um, in your crafting too so you could use that part the separate part uh, as a little frame for something which looks absolutely gorgeous you could go as a little backdrop on the inside if you wanted to uh, but for the time being we're just going to move that to one side because the only bit I need this one is now to make sure that I get that burnishing that I talked about earlier so using your bone folder fold over your first part fold that and give that a nice crisp burnish and then fold this one in on itself and do exactly the same. So what you'll end up with is this lovely little frame, and I'll show you here so you can see it. You've got this piece here that goes like a little Z there. So exactly the same on the other side. You're gonna fold that first part in, give it a nice crisp burnish. Fold this flap, this one inch one, in on itself. And again, a nice crisp burnish with your bone folder. And that's how you end up with that front dome. However, I do want to give it a little bit of a curl, so I'm just going to manipulate it while I've got it in my hands. So you can see now I've got a nice little, um, little dome feature. And again, you could just use your fingers just to do that effect, or you could use your bone folder as well to create that um, little dome part there and you can see straight away from what we've got is we've got our dome feature so that is the first part done and that will sit on there but we're going to do all as die uh, as die cutting we're going to do all as matting and layering for the next stage so you should have an eight by eight piece and your ten by eight piece with your frame cut out and your nice burnished um Flaps there, all ready to go for the next stage. Absolutely, Debbie. Uh, I think everyone uh, is really enjoying it so far. Mary Pat says this group is a happy place. Well, I'm pleased that we're able to offer you ha your happy place. Linda says, I love this collection. I made a lantern with it. Vicky is really loving the way that you explain all the steps. Teresa is saving this video and she's going to craft along later. That's a great point. You can always save this or share it if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or come back to our website at any point. I know a lot of you like to watch them through first and then pick it up again at the start and craft along absolutely uh, you can do that as well loads of you tuning in from all over the place which i'll go through a little later i want to go through our glue and foam uh, glue tape and foam pad collection that we've got available for you on the show today it's a really here it's like a real hero selection this one because you're getting the uh, all-purpose glue the tacky glue you're then also going to receive the tape pen in here and three packs of our foam pads too. You're essentially getting two of the foam pads for free when you buy it in this configuration, which is an absolutely stonking great deal, I think. Uh, I also have got a great deal for you on some card stocks too. Let me just bring these in because it is, of course, our Centura Pearl that we've got here. This kind of uh, sort of, it's almost a bit minty, isn't it? But we're calling this one pale silver which is beautiful of course centura pearl has that gorgeous gorgeous pearlescence on it then we also have for you the solar gold which is this one just here and again shiny uh, this one here is your bronze again absolutely gorgeous and you'll get 10 sheets uh, in each of these then you've got the pale gold here for you as well oh, look at that isn't it beautiful uh, really lovely 
Enjoy. Uh, and all of these, I think, will work with this collection. This is the copper, this one here. So these have been put together, this collection, uh, so it will work well with everything in your chinoiserie collection. You've got the green gold, which is that one here, which I always think like sounds like Gringotts, the bank from Harry Potter. Uh, this one here is your rose gold. Oh, look at it. It's like craft metal, isn't it? And you've then got the white gold. Uh, in here as well. Again, all of those really beautiful. Two ninety nine or four forty nine individually. However, any four of them, ten pounds or fourteen dollars. So really make sure you take advantage of that multi buy and use your club inspired discount in there as well. Right, we're going to go back to New Orleans uh, to speak to uh, the lovely Susie. How are you, Susie? Hi, Hi. Uh, really good. So I can hear you properly now as well. Have you been keeping well since we chatted last time? Yes, very well. That's uh -huh. long. Getting loads of crafting in, I hope. Uh, not loads this week, but hopefully this weekend somewhere. Well, you're getting some crafting in now. That's the main fit, Susie. Uh, how are you getting on? Uh, what have you gone for? The white cardstock or the black cardstock? And how are you getting on? I started off with the black cardstock, but I might change my mind. Oh. In true crafter style, Susie, <laughs> I'm gonna gonna see as you go as you mix it up. Right, as long as you are uh, keeping up, then uh, Susie, I think that's probably a good indication everyone else is as well. So we'll crack on with the next step if you're ready. Very good. Excellent. Right, Debbie, I'm ready to. I can see her over there. She's like a coiled spring. She's been doing a pre-show yoga just before uh, <laughs> the show. She was in a lotus pose as I came in earlier, uh, but I know now she is uh, ready for the next step. I must stop making you laugh because <laughs> what happens if I make Debbie laugh, she, she has a little cough. So I apologise. Yes, I did warn you. No, no laughing today. No, no laughing. laughing. Right. Okay. So, and I'm with Susie on that one. When I first started this project, I'd started it in black, and then I thought, oh, no, it looked like in white. So I did the white, which is hence why we've ended up with two of the same cards, just so that you can actually see the difference. So it's a really nice idea that she's gonna. She might change her mind up as well. So what I'm gonna do now is ask you to choose from that beautiful paper pad, and I'm gonna bring it in for a second because honestly, this paper pad, it's just one of the most glorious paper pads. I think we've ever done it's luxurious it's beautiful it's rich and the color tones in this are absolutely exquisite it's one of my favorites and I just want you now to think about um, what you're going to choose and I've also taken a couple of pieces of textured cardstock here so that you can see um, I've chosen this gorgeous green one with this beautiful um, lovely design here and I can't make my mind up Joe because I think both of these colour tones that come from the bright pad uh, look really gorgeous with it so it's really a case of choose your paper and then choose from your textured cardstock um, or from maybe Centura Pearl that you could use because um, some of those that Joe's just shown us if you've got some of those they're going to look absolutely beautiful with this collection I think I'm going to go with the lighter one this time I did the darker one yesterday but I think I quite like that lighter one so I'm going to choose the light tone for this one just a quick note on the Centura Pearl Rhonda says does the Centura Pearl score well meaning uh, oh. does it crack it's Oh, it scores like a dream. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. You'll get no cracking with it. It looks glorious when you do your scoring. And if you want to use it for maybe your card blank, so if you want to choose one of your Centura Pearls, that would look beautiful. And talk about luxurious. Imagine doing it in one of the golds, how gorgeous Ooh, that lovely. would look. Oh, now you've got me thinking, now why didn't I do that one? That's what I'm thinking, why didn't I do that one? Right, so going back to when you've chosen from your paper pad um, and you, you've chosen textured cardstock, I'm going to give you the measurements now that we need for the backdrop of your main part of the back card and also for the front uh, tabs here at the front. So for this in mind, I'm going to start with the textured one first because that's going to be the one that's bigger than the other one. So bring in back in your um your guillotine what we need to do first is cut this down to and this one that i've chosen is from the 8 by 8 so if you've got a 12 by 12 uh, you can do the 12 by 12 as well uh, but the measurements that we need are seven and three quarter inches so i'm going to measure this in and you can see with the 8 by 8 it's literally just taking a little slither off it's a quarter of an inch again bearing in mind fully extended arm flush up to the top and then we just take that down and cut and then when we turn it over this time i want it to be at five and 
three quarter inches. So that is the next um, measurement down from the number six inch. So what you'll end up with is a piece of seven and three quarter inches by five and three quarter. And that's gonna sit in the middle of your back piece of card uh, when we're popping this on, okay? So that's the first part done. However, you can get now, from this remaining part, you can get, because we've already measured it to seven and three quarters, you can get your last two bits out to, to take your strips so you're not wasting any of this. So for this one, you don't need to measure this length because we've already done it. We're just gonna turn it onto the portrait side and we're going to take this down and this is when I use my guillotine because I know that these inch strips here are an inch if I filled it in at a full inch by seven and three quarters it's going to fill the entire gap and I don't okay. want that I want to create a little bit of a matte and layer effect there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my guillotine and I don't know if we can get in but do you know here between here and the end yeah. is your inch so okay. if you just bear in mind where I take my measurements from, is that where the lines stop before the metal bar, can you see? I wish I could lift Here's this up to show you. Yeah. So oh, she's so good, Charlotte. Look at this. I'm going to just, just direct you. I want you to pop your cardstock running along the outside of there. Okay. So by that, I mean, and I'll just show you when I've got that in there, I'm just taking it to the very edge of that grid and then slip that down. And then I'm gonna repeat the same with this one. So I'm gonna to go to that very edge. There we go. And then take that down. And that will give me three quarters of an inch. So Perfect. it's got the seven and three quarters by three quarter of an inch. If you've got a guillotine that measures in your in half inches and your three quarters, then absolutely use that. But that just gives you a clear indication. And when you look at this, how it fits into that plate, you can see how lovely that is. It still gives me that little um, gap that I need for my matting and layering. So you'll end up with now your back base for your main two mats and then your two ones for the, the side tabs. And then we're going to just cut now using the 12 by 12 pad. Now, if you've got a pattern like this, the trick here, Joe, is to turn it to its side when you're doing this next measurement. So, to get the perfect matte and layer for this panel, we need seven and a half inches by five and a half inches. So, that's why I said turn it this time, so that you get the perfect, perfect matte in the right way. And I'm just going to show you. Seven and so a half. I guess if you were using one that wasn't directional, the print, then it wouldn't exactly. really matter. You do it any which way you like. But exactly. If you like the right way, but then yeah. start on so the side. So now you can see I've got it going in the right direction. If I'd have just gone in and cut it that way, Joe, I'd have ended up with them looking that way, and I wouldn't want that. So that's oh, how you... Oh, don't want you, a walking temple. Exactly. We want the temple to go in the right direction. So you can see now that fits perfectly onto there. And then for this next bit, Joe, we know we've already got this measured at seven and a half inches so we don't have to worry about that side again this time what you're going to do is you're going to take up your paper to the very end where that metal ruler is okay. and that creates the perfect mat and layer for the next piece very so precise with this guillotine isn't it it's is very awesome. precise yeah and i know a lot of people say yeah but you can't see your half inch measurement or your three quarters but this literally is a little guide as to what their next step uh, next step is and i'll just show you by bringing this in now so you can see when i pop that on and i'll turn it that way so you can see it it's the perfect mat and layer absolutely perfect so now you will have ended up with two panels for your side strips get them the right way around move this to one side we don't need this now for the time being in the bit box in the bit box and then we've got our other panel here. So I don't know if anybody wants to recap on those measurements again. Yes, please. I think that'd be uh, well worthwhile, Debbie. Right, so on your texture cardstock, that's the bit we need largest first. So we're going to go with that bold colour. This is seven and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches. And these two panels are three quarter inch in depth uh, okay. with your seven and three quarters again. That's the first bit. The second bit that max, max matches the mat and layer perfectly is seven and a half inches by five and a half inches and then this just measures at seven and a half by half an inch and perfect. that gives you the perfect mat and layers 
absolutely uh, gorgeous. Debbie. And what you can be doing, Joe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just now use one of my glues. This is entirely up to you which glue you use. I'm going to use the all purpose, but you could use your tape pen, you could use um, your tacky glue. Uh, it's entirely up to you red liner tape, finger lift tape, whatever it is that you want to use to get your mat and layers on. So that's what I'm going to do next, Joe. I'm just going to put those two bits, those bits together, but we're not going to stick anything down just yet because we're going to create the rest of the decoration for the card. Awesome. Uh, Aish says, twice in one week. Great to see Susie on Crafts TV again. Uh, Bernie Burns Fire says, hi, not crafting along today, but man, this is a gorgeous set, isn't it? Just. Uh, and Jen says, bless you, Debbie. Even when you're feeling under the wave, you still craft with us. Your instructions are always clear. This is why I love Crafters Companion. Free classes and always there to keep us inspired. Absolutely. Uh, and we always do this as well, don't we? Sort of two to four weeks after we'll, we bring you a big launch, we will aim to bring you a craft along. So you know that you've all got the opportunity to craft along in real time what i will be asking you to do as well at the end of the craft along once we're all finished is send us in pictures of your finished projects which will be lovely we love debbie don't we seeing oh, what yeah. everyone's created yeah absolutely i do love to see that and i won't be see if you if we don't get them in this show will you be showing them in the cart lord yes, yes fabulous so i won't get to see them but i will be watching um because my lovely colleague craig bless his little heart is uh, is taking over the cartload for me tonight god love him <laughs> so uh, but i will have a look and i'd love to see you post your makes um on our social media pages you can always drop a picture onto my page uh, so i can have a little peek at it as well to see what you've created um because i love other people's interpretations of when we do these craft alongs joe i think that's what i love about them is that we all have an idea it's nice to be able to follow along it really is but it's also nice uh, to see people's takes on it as well which I just love so that now is all the matting and layering done so you've got your um, backdrop which will sit in the middle there and then you've also got now your um, and we're not gonna like I said we're not gonna stick these bits down just yet but you've got all your pieces to create that lovely backdrop for your card so I think that may be time to take a little bit of a pause now um, unless you want to stick it together actually you can do if you want to stick it together right now that's entirely up to you uh, but um, I'll come back to that in a moment I just need to go and lubricate the old throat there Joe for a second just then we'll come back to that in a moment if that's okay with you awesome uh, yes it looks absolutely beautiful already Debbie just with that um, first simple step which is fantastic <coughs> so uh, lots of you chatting away any questions that you've got now's a great opportunity to get them into me anything you want recapped there but I think it looks like everyone is keeping up I need to let you know about something that's very low in stock at the moment uh, across on the website we've put together a three-piece ink pad collection which we think is going to work beautifully uh, with the chinoiserie so what you've got is uh, the lagoon which is that one just there uh, you've then got Bordeaux and you've got the midnight in there as well a lovely 20% saving on those which is fantastic so if you want to grab them though uh, we are getting quite limited now in some of the ink pad colours in pretty much uh, all of the different collections. So in the opaque pigment, water reactive, the quick dry, in all of them we're getting sort of dangerously low. So what I would say is if you've been thinking about stocking up on certain colours, if you're missing a couple, you know a couple of them are getting maybe a little dry, I would suggest you do it now because I think we're heading towards that situation again where we lose some of them. And you know, you know what the, the ink pad situation has been like over the last year and a half. It's been very difficult to keep them in stock. You'll find the whole ink pad range across on the website, craftscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. Now, as well as uh, having the full collection uh, available for you on the show you can actually go for the individuals as well they are all available individually for you and I'm going to give you those individual details now as we go through them so we've got the chinoiserie frame die which is this one just here 19.99 or 24.95 now you've got the beautiful birds in here two really lovely quality stamps these ones then you've got your temple, which is that one there. I love that you've got the little embellishments here with the floral elements. See this floral element as well? This will decoupage up together, which I think is awesome. Then you've got one of my favourite elements of this collection, the Oriental Lanterns. Uh, and what that's got there for you is the stamps as well as the dies. And the great thing is about splitting the stamps out, you can cut out the left side or the right side or cut the whole thing out, which is completely up to you. We've got the Peony Reef, which is this one here. Again, stamps and dies here for you. And decoupageable. Oh, decoupageable. There's a new word. I like that one. I'm going to use that. Decoupageable elements. 
Hello. Uh, then we've got the embossing folder for you as well. It's a standard embossing folder, but it's anything but standard, as Craig would say, uh, because you've got that beautiful uh, peony elements in there. Then, oh, the paper pad. I mean, it, it truly is. It's like a double A side, this one, isn't it? There are so many uh, gorgeous pages in here. Uh, it is available, of course, because it's available individually. You can go for it, uh, in, an extra one in conjunction with the big collection if you want. I think there'll be a lot of you coming to stock up on this one uh, again today. $12.99 is a brilliant price for that, considering you're getting, what, 48 sheets in there, which is fantastic. And you've then got those uh, laser cut 3D die toppers, 3D die cut toppers uh, in there too, which is fantastic. Right, we're going to give you a little bit longer to get yourself caught up. So whilst you do that, I will take a quick break. Uh, I want to share with you all the details uh, about the exciting ways we ship our products to you across the bond. Uh, so take a look. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafter's companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. All the details there of uh, Shipping and also Club Inspire, uh, which is fantastic. Shall we? Should we go and have a check in with Susie? I think we should. Let's see how she's getting on uh, over in New Orleans. And also, I'd quite like to know how the weather is because it is very, very hot here in the North East. What's the weather doing in New Orleans today, Susie? You know we love a bit of weather chat here in the UK. It's very, very hot and very, very humid. Oh, exactly the same. Uh, what sort of, how hot are we talking when we say hot? Um, today, I believe it's, uh, it's high 80s, Ooh. very high, so 86, Ooh. 87, but it's like 100% humidity. It's nasty. Yeah, nasty. That's I love how that we are all summer. <laughs> Until September, October, it's awful. Yeah, well, stay inside, uh, in the shade, doing some crafting. Always the best way forward, isn't it? Uh, how are you getting on? Are you keeping up? Is it looking fabulous so far? I'm keeping up. I had a little bit of a glue disaster, but other than that, we're good. <laughs> oh, no. What was your glue disaster, Susie? You can't tell me something like that, not, not giving me full disclosure. Come on, dish. The glue just went everywhere, and I had to clean it up when I was gluing my strips. <laughs> oh, I put a bit of ink over it. It'd be fine, I'm sure. Right, as long as you're, exactly. are you are, are you ready for the next step then in that case, Susie? I believe I'm ready. Fantastic. If Susie's ready and everyone at home seems to be ready, then take it away, Debbie. Well, I was just going to say, to avoid those glue disasters, this is probably one of the best glues out there. 
that if you do get some splurges or some glue seepage or some little accidents, it rubs off really, really well and doesn't destroy your card. Um, I had a slight little glue disaster myself, Susie, with this piece here because I put a little bit too much on. However, with it being that rubber, rubber glue, you can rub it off. Uh, so again, really, really little top tip there. So I was getting ahead of myself and I was telling you all to stick it all together and then realised, whoops, you might not know how to do that little bit. So we're just going to rewind that little part and we're just going to now stick on the front part of that um, dome card. We're going to pop on our two pieces, our two strips. Um, and make sure you've got your, um, your paper pattern in the right direction again. Like Joe said, you don't want a, an upside down tempo. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't work. Uh, so what we're going to do, and the lovely thing about all-purpose glue as well, Joe, for me, it's that wiggle time. It's getting it into place um, so that you don't literally stick it down and then you can't move it. Uh, so that's my little top tip as well. It's one of my favourite glues. Leanne won't mind me saying, because she says it ever such a lot, it's her favourite glue in the whole wide world. She uses it tons mm. and tons of times uh, and always one of those that you use when you craft absolutely fabulous so again just making sure that i've got them both going in the right direction i've got it in the right spot so that i've got even uh, mats on both ends that's the first part done and then literally now what we're going to do is we're going to stick that card together to create that uh, dome piece so first things first Take your tape, again, chosen tape, whether it be wet glue, whether it be tacky glue, whether it be red liner tape, finger lift tape, um, tape pen, just pop your chosen glue on this side. So I'm going to just pop again, I'm going to use uh, my all purpose. And again, it gives me that wiggle time to be able to get this into place. I'm not going to stick this down just yet. I'm just going to move that to one side. And I'm, what I'm going to do is, because this is eight by eight, it doesn't really matter which side you put it on. What you're just going to do is make sure that this edge goes up to this flat edge here. So you're going to pop that on. And like I said, the, the beauty of using the whole purpose means that you can have a look both sides. Have you got it on nice and flush? If you have, you can then just commit to sticking that down and again, it dries fairly quickly, um, our all purpose. It's not something that takes a long time to dry, uh, but it does mean that I've got that little bit of wiggle time to get it into its right place. And then this panel is going to stick onto there. However, before you do that, Joe, we're going to pop this backdrop in. So you're going to hold that back, little top tip there, just give it a little burnish. And that what you're going to do, because we've cut this down to size, you can actually just place it a little, about probably, I'd say a couple of millimetres away from that end and pop that in. And again, using, I would use definitely for this bit, because you've got that wiggle time again, I would definitely use all-purpose glue. Pop on your glue, give it a nice coverage all over. There we go. Are you quite sparing with it or do you get loads up down on there, Debbie? Um, I don't go mad. I don't put like masses down because you don't need it. Um, but before I um, actually, it's, the thing as well is if the, if you get it too, if you put too much on, that's when you do get your glue seepage coming out at all ends. However, like I said, because it's that glue that rubs to a little rubber ball in your fingers, right. you can get that off. Which is like I said on this end, you can't even see me glue disaster because I use the right glue for that job. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I've popped that into its place. We're going to pop his glue onto this end tab on the inside panel pop that all the way down and then we're going to just turn that i have to do this by picking it up joe it makes it okay. easy for myself so i'm just going to place that on and again you're taking it to that very flat edge and just checking both sides to make sure it's nice and flush there we go and then i'm just going to bring it in so i can see it uh, there we go you just stick that down now if you are using tape pen it'll be quite instant that uh, but because I'm using my glue, my wiggle glue, I call it, the wiggle glue, wiggle, 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 wiggle it gets wiggle, it into place. Wiggle. And it also means that if I haven't got that panel in the center, it doesn't matter because I can get it, I can give it a little bit of a wiggle. However, per, it, it's just gone in fine. So all I'm going to do is give it a nice little coverage. I'm going to stick my hand right up there, Joe, and give it a nice little wiggle around and make sure it's all adhered. And now what you've got, and I'm just going to give that a nice little, little manipulation there. What you've got is your card base 
with all the mats and layers you've got the little dome going off there you can see that lovely dome feature um, if you wanted to add a bit of acetate onto the back you could do another little feature that you could use is the gilding wax around the nice. edge of this beautiful so we've got a great frame. deal on that today so if you've got gilding wax perhaps run a little bit of gilding wax over there uh, or keep it plain but that's what you'll end up with so that awesome. is your card base done and dusted and did i not say to you that it was very easy to put together very quick very quick, very easy, and a lot easier than what you think. <laughs> so, and it looks such a, such an effective card, and it's a freestanding one as well. It stands absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it does indeed. Gen C yeah. is talking about how much she absolutely loves the glue as well. Uh, Tay, uh, Catherine, sorry, said, uh, can you just get Debbie to say uh, how well it works with Centura, the all-purpose? Can you use it with Centura, or would you avoid it, Debbie? Um, you can. So if you're popping um, another... So, so if you're matted and layering, if you're popping it onto your Centura Pearl, um, I personally prefer the all-purpose, but yes, um, it does stick beautifully on there. I know it's got a coating on it, so I know a lot of people will say to you, you don't put like a, a wet glue onto that, but you can. Same with your tacky glue. Be careful with your tacky glue because your tacky glue is water based, this is solvent based um, and sometimes you can get that little ripple if you're not using the right one. The one that I wouldn't use this on is onto glitter card or mirror card okay. and the reason being is it'll lift the colour, it can lift the colour. That's when I'd use my tacky glue. Okay. Debbie uses tacky glue for absolutely everything, it's one of her favourite glues. She'll talk about the tacky glue till the cows come home. You're not talking about yourself it. in the third person there are you? No, the other Debbie. The other Debbie. The, other the Debbie. fish Debbie as we fish. call her affectionately. <laughs> the fish. Uh, Jen C <laughs> uh, who we were talking about the glues there a second ago, she says a uh, collar all purpose glue is the best, it doesn't wrinkle the paper unlike yeah. other glues. I always buy a couple of glues when I order at Crafts Companion so I never run out which is awesome, uh, a definite, uh, well, definitely is the way to go. Uh, so what do you want to do then, do you want to carry on? Should we press on? We can what, press on. How are you feeling? Yeah, we can we press, press on. on. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got your card base done, so you can pop that to one side. So what we're going to do now is the stamping element. So uh, the only thing I forgot to tell you you needed was a stamping platform. Whoops, silly old me. <laughs> you can use um, rocker blocks. Uh, stamping platform we had the hero tool on yesterday which is what I'm going to use today which is the magnetic base one so we do have that still available and it'll be on yesterday's show on creative cravings just go and check the website out there because I think in right and thinking there's an extra cheeky 50 points bonus oh, and a 10% discount this. I, is that right? and a 10% discount and the 10% discount you'll need discount. to be quick though because it'll end this evening that deal yes yeah be quick be quick now, the next elements from the Chimoiserie collection that I'm going to use are the beautiful birds, because they truly are beautiful. This is a gorgeous stamp set, absolutely exquisite, and I adore these birds, those lovely little love birds, they're absolutely gorgeous. A couple of nice little sayings on here. Joe, did you find out what this one was? Uh, we did. It means live, laugh, love, I think. Oh, that one, one of them love. definitely does. We, we, we got that uh, clarified. Maybe someone... Uh, at home knows and can write in and tell us yeah and there's also a couple of lovely sentiments and a couple of lovely florals on there and one of my favorite ones is this your friendship means the world to me i oh, absolutely love that that's and nice. that's what i've chosen for this one so i've got the birds from this set and that friendship uh, means the world to me on that set we've taken the uh, chinoiserie temple because there's some beautiful florals on here as well uh, and i'm just going to use this corner element here so that one we're going to use and then we've got the oriental lanterns i love this one because this is not only just a stamp set it's an actual die set too and i love the idea that we've split the dies so it means that you can cut things onto the edge of a corner onto the left hand side nice. the right hand side the middle of your card you can stamp your image out and you can use that to create a full uh, piece without having to do any fussy cutting so it's a really lovely collection and the most beautiful lanterns on there so i'm going to use this particular one in the corner it's entirely up to you this is your card um, so if you want to use different elements by all means do so uh, but you will need yourself a good stamping platform and what better stamping platform than the magnetic base which means i can actually uh, pop my cardstock down onto there and what we're going to need is <coughs> excuse me <coughs> some nina cardstock so we've got nina cardstock which so excited joe is back in stock it is and it's also part don't forget of the get it got it good 
Monday's get it, got it, good, get it, get it, got it, went. So we had to go and get it, got it, a new one for you, which is now in stock. You get three sheets, uh, three, you don't get three sheets. It'd be a really bad deal if you only got three sheets, wouldn't it? Three packs of the watercolour card stock, so 45 sheets of that, and 48 sheets of the Nina card stock, 93 sheets in total for that great price you can see there. Uh, there, 19 uh, pounds or 28 dollars if you want to get your hands on that one. Be quick though, because that might get it, got it gone as well, uh, like the other one did, I'd say. Wow, I've never known a get it, got it, good. One day. It, get it, got it, I've never known it happened that fast. Get it, got it, went. Get, get it, got it, and it absolutely flew. Now, I've popped some Nina cardstock under here, because what I'm going to do is take my stamps. So take your stamps, and you can get all of these stamped images onto one uh, piece of Nina cardstock. I've just trimmed mine down to slightly smaller than eight inches, because this is an eight, eight by eight platform. Um, and I'm just layering this down. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's just to position it into place. Um, but, oh, no, not that one, Debbie, you want that one. That's the one you're after. So it's just positioning all my uh, things, like my sentiments, my birds on there. I'm going to go And are you going to my... cut these down afterwards, or are yes. you placing them where you want them right now? I'm just placing them where I want them right now. I'm going okay. to cut them down um, in a moment. We're going to do that in a moment. Uh, but what I'm just doing for now is just getting all the things that I want from those stamp sets uh, to create uh, ready for doing the colouring part. So I'm just positioning them all into place. I'm going to then put my platform on the top. And it just helps me get everything where I want it, Joe. Um, and the lovely thing about this is that when you hold and anchor it down with your magnets, your, your cardstock's not moving anywhere. Now, if you're wondering why I've chosen Nina cardstock, it's the perfect cardstock for our alcohol markers. And I'm going to be using tri-blends to colour these images in with. You can use any alcohol markers. Um, so you could use your tri-blend brush pens, tri-blends, classics, illustrators. Um, any more, Joe? Any more? I'm trying to think of the other ones. I think Aqua I've covered markers, them all. Tricolor no, markers. No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, 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 haha. <laughs> good, good that you've said that. Actually, that's a really good point, actually, Joe. So I'm I glad feel you like you, that you, I feel like you tripped me up there, Debbie. No. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 no. If you're going to do uh, your tricolor acres or anything water based, then you need watercolour cardstock and you need your different finesse pad to what I'm going to use because I'm going to use the finesse pad with the alcohol ink, the only pad I forgot to get out. But I'll show you what I mean. So there we go. That's what we need, which is the noir black. There's pebble, there's flagstone, uh, there's rustic brown. Your choice. I'm going for black because I like a nice crisp image on this one. Uh, but yes, if you are using watercolour with the tricolour aquas or aqua markers or anything water-based, then you would need watercolour cardstock. Same stamps, different ink pad, which would be your finesse waterproof dye. So if you are choosing a water-based product to colour with, because you can, this is your craft along as well, uh, you can do. But for me, I'm using this one, Joe. So that was actually a very good point you made there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still absolutely. feeling scolded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really. I'm not really. Now, I'm just... <laughs> oh, me. look what I've done now. I've made a laugh again. I know, Excuse I like it. I'm, I've got Debbie telling me off for the wrong pens. I've got the gallery telling me off for making Debbie laugh, honestly. I'm like, the, I, I'm like the panto villain today in this craft room, aren't I, Debbie? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> so what I'm just doing... Uh, do you know how we're going to call you Gary, then? Who the heck is Gary? Who's Gary? Who's Gary? <laughs> Gary, we're going to come out and ask me who's Gary. Even, I don't even know a Gary. I know a few Garys. Do you? I don't know why we're thinking are they all, Gary. Are they all, you know, uh, ravishingly handsome? No. <laughs> Debbie! <laughs> How rude. You've told me off for the pens. The gallery have told me off. Now <laughs> Debbie said that I don't remind her of a handsome Gary. Uh, I mean, it's just not my day today, is it? <laughs> You're really? my handsome Joe, Joe. Oh, You're thank my you. handsome Joe. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, Debbie. <laughs> behave yourself right i'm going to give it a good coverage with the ink and then i'm going to turn that over now and then we're going to use this platform to get that crisp image now because they're all spread out you can give it a nice coverage first and if you have missed anywhere don't worry but i am just going to show you but just by putting your pressure over the stamp and pressing down when you lift that off 
Perfect. How gorgeous is that? Beautiful. Now, if you have missed anywhere, Joe, you can go back in. That's the wonderful thing about the Hero Tool that we're calling it this week, because it really, truly is. But if you have missed anywhere, do not worry, because you'll get that coverage by going back over it. So I'm just going to clean my stamps down for a second, Joe. So I'll just give this a nice little clean. There we go. Beautiful. That's just me cleaning my stamps. Look at me being a good girl. I know. What's going on? I know. And I'm just going to give that a little... Normally, Joe, I'm terrible. I've got, to, I've got to own up to this bit. Do you just put them away dirty? I do, yeah. I'm so oh, sorry. It's a terrible like? thing to admit to, isn't it? But when uh, you're at home or when you're here? Um, both. Oh, Debbie. <laughs> now who's the pantomime villain, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so. sorry. No, it's all right, it's my own fault, I shouldn't have laughed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, I, I tend not to clean them. That's a really horrible thing to own But does it to. damage them? No. Oh, well, No, not at all. Not at all. It's just next for a mucky ink. And the thing is, if you've inked up something that, you know, in a different colour, like sometimes I do sparkle inks on the back of stamps and things, if I haven't cleaned it, it can make a real difference when you come into uh, to, to, to using it next time. So all I would say to that is um, <clears throat> definitely give it a clean. Right, that's my stamping done, Joe. So we're going to take that off the platform, lift that off. So we're done with stamping for the time being. So I'm going to put that to one side. And then what we can do is we can do the colouring in part now. So this is the fun bit. So I want you to go and get hold of all your colours. Now, if you want to know what colours I've chosen for this, I'll give you the list of the colours. However, and I just want to see if I can show you an example of different colours. Just bear with me a minute, Joe. I just need to grab bearing something. With, bearing with. Don't you worry about that. Lots of you loving this. Joe says, I love this card. I can't wait to try it out when I'm not at work. Um, Sharon's got three of the paper pads. They are available in the video. I'll give you those details just shortly, actually. Uh, Rosalind says, green is my favourite colour. I'm loving the way this is coming along. Uh, Deborah's just gone for an extra one of the paper pads. Barbara's abstract dyes are being delivered on Monday. Wit woo. And Mon Monkey Head Bonker says, I have Nina card slot. Could I also use the Spectrum Noir paper? I guess if it was the alcohol colouring, yes. the alcohol one, yes. Yes. The watercolour one, no, Debbie? No, unless you're using your aqua, try aquas, your, your water-based markers. Okie doke. Then you would use that. That's a water-based. So I know what you mean, the pads, there's different pads, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so, so there's one for yes. alcohol markers yes. and then one for watercolour ones. Absolutely. So you'd want the alcohol ones. Absolutely. I'm just going to show you as well, because I'm going to talk about the colours that I've used, but I just wanted to show you these, because can you see this beautiful one that's being used? Oh, yeah. How gorgeous is that? Beautiful. And that is really beautiful. That's been done with colour blend pen pencils how stunning and if you've been lucky enough to pick up those pencils that were have been on half price this week that's what you can create nice. this one I absolutely love this one with uh, the classic pens how gorgeous are those birds colored in with the oranges what is that folded paper in the corner I love that whatever that is oh do you know that? it's like a little fan yeah it's like a little fact you know I don't know how she's done that so that's absolutely beautiful Oh, isn't it fancy? It's fancy. It is fancy. It's a fancy fan. Yeah, that is a fan fa fancy, fancy fan. Fancy fan. Fancy fan. I do declare. <laughs> but my colouring, and I, what I've used for my birds, is the green turquoise blend for my birds. And for my flowers, I've used the pink blend. So it's a pale pink blend and the pale pink shades. Nice. And for the branches, I've used the gold brown blend. Beautiful. And then for my lantern, I've used a touch of uh, gold yellow blend for the light inside. And I've uh, also used the greens and the pale pinks because I matched. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'll show you what I mean. I've matched them all to tone in nice. with the papers. So they look really lovely. And even on the black one, because you've got that green running through, I just thought that looked really, really beautiful. Offset those colours with that paper really lovely so that's my colour choice but of course this is your craft along this is your project you can colour your birds your flowers in your lanterns in in whatever you colours you. you want absolutely you do you now I need a bit of blotting paper underneath Joe before I get carried away with myself because I know what I'm like 
Um, let me just bring in a couple of sheets of spare cardstock. Can you card put any stock. card stock underneath? Dylan? I do, yeah. I, I particularly don't like to waste money in the card stock. <clears throat> just because it goes out of stock so quickly because really every does. time it comes in it's out uh, so I'm just using some white stamping card to soak that uh, ink up so literally all we're going to do is we'll start with the bed so I'm going to start with the lighter tone so um, I've got light medium and dark and I have talked about my tri blends before I love my tri blend collection because it makes life so much easier having that color family in that one pen but of course if you want to use uh, your classics or your illustrators, the colours that you're looking for are your GT1, GT2 and GT3 and you can create that same blend okay, with your classics or illustrators. So I'm going to lay down my colour first and I'm going to start with the uh, lightest tone. So I'm just going to go over an area, in fact I'm going to do the whole of uh, his body on this one. And this is the bit now, Joe, where I might need your help because... Oh, uh, don't you worry about <clears> that. I got, I got you back, Debbie. Uh, thank you, because I do literally get lost in the world so of colour. So just putting a load of colour down for the first bit then, Debbie. I'm saturating the, all that of the that area shade? with the lightest shade. So, And if you've noticed, I'm not just doing like one coat. I'm actually Whacking popping down yeah, quite a bit of that all the way around. It's like what we call the saturation part where you pop down quite a bit onto there. And then I'm going to take my pen and start with a darker one. So I'm going to just, in fact, I'll separate the pen so I can show you. I'm going to go in with the darker one and I'm going to go, I'm going to use the lined areas. Do you know the, the stamp? Yep. I'm going to use that for where uh, okay. my dimension, you know, your shade, your light, yeah. your dimension is on your, um, you know, on your, uh, on your stamp. I guess use that's that. what makes these so easy to colour is the fact that we've yes. done a lot of the work for you with those marks, haven't we? Yes, absolutely. So again, I'm just using where I think shading will be. I was going to call the them under is. gills then, but they're not gills. That's what fish have, aren't they? Uh, what are they called then? The cheeky bits here on a bird. Anyone at home? These bits? The jowly bits? Should we go with jowls? Jowls, yeah. What did Charlotte say? Feathers. Feathers. God love her. Oh, Charlotte. God love her. <laughs> so I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go in I mean, I'm not in a place at all. I said gills. So, I mean, <laughs> Charlotte, at least birds have feathers. They don't have gills. Maybe they do have gills. Who knows? I saw a programme last night with water buffalo, and I didn't realise that water buffalo actually live in water, Debbie. Do they really? But they can live on land. You always see them on land in places like working the fields and stuff. They actually naturally live in water. Well, I What's never... it called? Amphibians. They don't. No, they don't have. They breathe air, but they actually live in like they live in like a boggy swamp, basically. There you go. Well, you learn something new every day. So I've just laughed at Charlotte with her feathers, but she could laugh back at me because I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So I've just used my medium colour there, John. Then I'm going back in with my light tone, and I'm going back over those areas. Um, to uh, preserve the highlight. So again, all we're doing is just, and again, you can go back in. You, you know, if you're not happy with your shading or your colouring, you can go back in and add to if you want at any time. But I'm just building up them layers of colour um, by simply using uh, my pens to create that. And that's what I tell you, I love uh, try blends for that reason just makes it so much easier and you can see just how gorgeous that's so looking so much shape and dimension to that there bird. is there is and i'm going to repeat that with my other bird as well so let's start with him and i'll get like quite a nice bit of color down little circular motions it's entirely up to you how you color but i tend to do a little circular motions when i'm doing this um and then just go literally over the all of that area Fantastic. Uh, Monkeyhead Bonkers says, Joe, stop making Debbie laugh. This pair is always full of laughs. Not great for Debbie. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you can't tell me not to laugh and then laugh yourself, Monkeyhead Bonkers. That's just not fair, is it? Um, my, my granddad, many, many years ago, had a cracked rib and the doctor said, whatever you do, just don't laugh. Oh. And I don't know why he found everything like extra hysterical the whole time he had a crack oh, rib because all he did him. was laugh. And then, you know, we kept doing like unintentionally funny things. The moment someone tells you not to make someone laugh, it's what you want to do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Becca's Craft says, can't wait for the postman to bring my collection. So eager to follow this craft song. She also says, and I'm not making this up or embellishing it, and Joe, you're very dashing. Thank you very much, Becca's craft. Wit woo. Did I, I not tell you that when you walked you, in today? Yeah. I told you that too. 
Oh, you did thank you, Debbie. Oh, I won't be able to get my ego out the door after this show. <laughs> Aisha says, uh, I think this is the hardest part for me. I do struggle with picking the right colours. I guess the thing is with the tri blends, what's beautiful, Debbie, isn't it? Is because they are the three pens together, uh, you know you're going to blend them perfectly every single time. So yeah. um, really simple, straightforward, laid out for you. Don't forget, if you are just joining us, you're thinking, oh gosh, I've missed this, I can't take part. You can watch this back anytime you like over on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching it now, across on our website too. Uh, and if you don't have this collection yet, don't worry, we've got you covered. I'm going to take you back through. We have the full collection available for you at an incredible price that you can see that on your screen. And I'll show you everything real soon, uh, again, that you are getting included. As Debbie did say, I know Debbie's using the tri blends. You can use your classics, your illustrators. What other ones did we find, Debbie? Uh, classics, illustrators, your tri blend, blend tri blend brush pens. Yeah, they're the yeah. four that you can use with this. If you stamp it in a waterproof ink, of course, you can then use your aqua markers, uh, your tri color aqua markers as well. So it's completely up to you. You've got so many options when it comes to colouring this in. Maybe you're not going to colour it in, Debbie. I think it would still look beautiful if you just left it as a black and white silhouette, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's entirely up to you. Do you know, I was just thinking that, Joe. You could, you know, I love colour. I am a, I am a girl of colour. I know love colour. Uh, but if you wanted to keep it really striking, yeah, absolutely. What about your pigment inks? What about doing a bit of embossing? Nice. Do you know, with just a colour? And having you, oh, that'd look lovely. That would look gorgeous. Yeah, and that would look maybe beautiful. Maybe you could even do it in a bit of a resist over the top of it, maybe. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, now, now you're talking. And the great thing is, what we teach you, we teach you, like I've taught you anything in this show, what Debbie teaches you in this craft along, these are techniques that you can take into all the other collections that you have. Once you've learned this card concept, play around with it. Mix it up, try it with some of your other collections, mix and match, cross-pollinate some of your collections together. I think what this is all about, isn't it, is, is picking up new skills and techniques. So you can take these skills and techniques into absolutely everything. Play around with different colored paper pads, try, play around as well with your different colored, uh, colored, 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 color, ooh. Your different coloring, ooh. Different colors of coloring mediums. That is really <laughs> difficult to say. Oh. I should have said different tones and shades, shouldn't I? I've only been here a year and a half. You, you know. I've only been doing this job for 11 years now. Oh, bless you. Hey, Joe, you do make me chuckle. Gonna, I'm, I don't know what I can blame. Maybe the I heat. won't blame anything for a let's while. Let's blame the heat. Let's, let's, it's summer, isn't it? We've moaned and whinged how cold it is for the last two months. Now we've got a little bit of summer. Now we're whinging constantly about how hot it is everywhere. We are like the, we are atypical British people. You know that, Debbie. We are indeed. We are indeed. Now you can see, we do, I can't believe that, but it's true. It's absolutely true. We've been moaning, oh my goodness, the weather's absolutely rubbish. And then we get a beautiful bit of weather and we're moaning, it's too warm. You can't win. You just can't win. Uh, now I'm going to choose before I've actually put my green away I am going to do my elements that are on here as well so I've got my leaves there's a couple of little areas on your branches as well so again you can just take that and colour this in and I'm just going to literally just add that touch of little colour just onto here uh, because you'll see I mean it's such a gorgeous stamp it really is Joe. I, 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 I'm not usually a bird lover it's, you know, it's not one of the things that I tend to look for when I'm crafting, but I adore these. These are just exquisite. They really are absolutely beautiful. Um, and then again, just choosing your colour. Let's go in. And the reason why I've chosen to um, choose just like, you know, colours that work together on all three images rather than different colours for each one. Absolutely. It's just, it brings it all in together. Debbie, if you were going to be one of these colour co color combinations, what would you be? Yellow and blue, navy and teal, black and orange, maroon and peach, deep purple and blue, or navy and orange? Ooh. I would be navy and orange. Uh, do you know, uh, did you say black and orange? I said d black and orange, yes. Yes, I think I would go for right. black and orange. Wow. Very striking. It says... That makes you lively and powerful. Ooh, ooh. Mm, isn't that entertaining yet credible? Is that uh, you, Joe? That's me, yeah, apparently. We're just looking at, Erin's uh, just looking at different colour combos which work well together. Uh, yellow and blue being the navy and teal, black and orange, maroon and peach, deep purple and blue, navy and orange. Uh, so if you were struggling with colour combos, just get on the Googles, it's always a good idea, and have a little look. There's always loads of information uh, over on, uh, on, on the Googles, yeah. There's loads of information over on our website as well. So yellow and blue is playful, play, playful? playful and authoritative. 
Navy and teal is soothing or striking. Black and orange, lively and powerful. Maroon and peach, elegant and tranquil. Definitely not us, Debbie. Uh, deep purple and blue is serene and dependable. And navy and orange is entertaining yet credible. I love navy and orange together. I mean, I've got navy and orange on today, really, together, haven't I? Uh, and I would love it at home. I just think it's a lot, Debbie, especially if it's like bright orange and navy. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you know that'd look absolutely beautiful? Do you think so? Oh, in I a, do. In a, in yeah. A, in a house, though, like you've got to stare at it all day, every day. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. Now, John, I'm just using all my. I don't know if you've noticed. It's just to get all the greenage out of the greenage. Is that a word? It is now. <clears throat> it is now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just get the greenage out of the way. Uh, so I've laid down my lighter colour. Now, if you want to do create that depth and dimension, take your dark and just pop a couple of little lines on either end and it creates that little bit of an illusion. So when you're doing this, it's that again, it's down to that, you know, that light source, uh, but to create a little bit of an illusion, you're just gonna pop a little few strokes down either end. Then we're gonna go in with the mid one and rather than going over it, I'm just joining it from the end, going in with that mid. And again, just taking it up a little notch but leaving, leaving some in, space the in the middle, cool. you what love? But you're leaving some space in the middle. I am leaving some space in the middle, and it'll create that little bit of dimension where it looks almost realistic. But it's a little bit, you know, you've got a little bit of a curve going off. And I'm going back in with my light one and just going over that middle bit to blend that in. And that's nice. a little top tip I'll give you that creates that little dimension. And if you want to add a little bit more, Joe, go back in with your dark and just give it another little touch up. And it just adds that little finishing detail to create that illusion of um, like a curvature on your uh, lantern. So I, uh, hope that, I hope that little bit of uh, information helped you there. That's all my green parts done. So I'm gonna pop my pin back. Oops, right way around though, mid in the middle, Debbie. I'm one of those girls as well that likes to have my pen lids on the right lid. Do you have to have where it says light, mid and dark all facing the same way? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 well, if you looked at my bag, what I carry my tri blends around with, that's exactly what I've got. I've got them like that, where, <laughs> where the, everything just matches and I can see it really handy. So that's all my green parts done, Joe. <coughs> what I'm going to do... Um, so Sally is saying, us Brits are always happy moaning about the weather. We're at our happiest when we're moaning about the weather. What do the Americans love to moan about? That's what I'd love to know. Erin, anything in particular? Depends on where you live, I guess. Let me know about what you moan about in your state in the comments. I'd love to know. Uh, monkey, monkey, New England is the where it is. That's where you're from, isn't it, Erin? New England, cool. Uh, monkey, maybe it's because it's New England. That's why you love the moaning about the weather. Like old England, moaning about the weather. New England, moaning about the weather as well. Uh, Monkeyhead Bonkers says, my wedding colours are going to be navy and coral with a highlight of gold. Stunning. Love that, Debbie, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Are you ready to do a little bit more colouring? Yes, please. Right, so I'm going to do the flowers. Now, for my flowers, I did tell you that I chose pale pink blend and the pale pink shades. Uh, because on this particular colour set, we've got... And I'm not going to use all of the, the shades. I'm just going to use the lighter end. Because on this, we've got pale pink blend, one, two and three. And then I'm going to use the four as well to give me a little bit of extra depth and dimension. But, of course, you could use the other two if you wanted to. Uh, but for myself, I'm just going to use the lighter lighter end of the shades and then all three of the um of the tri blends in the uh, in the pale pink blend that's the word i'm looking Brilliant. for so again it's exactly the same light is toned down first and i'm going to go in and quite quite heavily saturate that by that i mean i'm putting a lot of that color down over all of the petals and you're not worried about going over the lines here, Debbie? Obviously not the outside line, but the inner lines, you just sort of smushing it all on. Yeah, and the, to be fair, when you do colour, if I'm colouring a really intense project, I do tend to work on a petal at a time. Okay. Uh, but because these aren't overly massive, as in that they're not, you know, they're not huge, so I can get away with working with these quite quickly. The alcohol doesn't dry instantly. It's something that, you know, evaporates over time. Um, so I, I know I can get away with it. So again, I'm just popping that colour down. Going to go in with that darker of the shade, so that, that PP4, uh, I'm going to go in because that's the darkest one. And again, little flicking techniques around the petals where I think, and again, I'm just using that line work on the stamp to be able to create this. If it makes it easier, turn your page and work on each of those petals when you're working with this. 
Uh, but again, I'm just laying down, if you've noticed, light, then going in with a darker one. And then working in the mid-tones and the uh, dark tones on this as well. So again, I'm going to go in with the dark on the uh, pale um, blend. And again, it just adds that extra bit of depth and dimension onto each one. And it makes it easy for getting that lovely shading Brilliant. on your petals. And then you're just going to continue that same process with the other petals. Every I'm single, guessing, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that's all I'm going to do, Joe. I'm just going to carry on that through in, entire all of the petals. All right, awesome. Yep. Cheryl says then, uh, I complain about people not using turn signals when changing lanes. Apparently, Erin seconds this as well. People love to moan about people's driving in the US. Do you know what I don't understand about driving in the US, Erin? That there's no like. I mean, I may be wrong, so please connect me if I am. But from memory, there's not like a, a fast lane or a slow lane. They all just sort of go at their own pace on the freeway. You just go round. Okay. So in the UK, we're quite good at like keeping to the, the, the side and then we just go round to overtake. Whereas in the US, it's like, there's just cars everywhere. So I get that. Uh, <laughs> apparently we have a lot of weird roundabouts, also known, Erin, as roundabouts. Uh, <laughs> very common in the UK. I don't know if you guys really have roundabouts in the US. I'm not sure everything. You have stop signs, though, don't you? So I feel like the stop signs, though, it's a lot of stopping. Whereas the roundabouts, you just kind of just, you know, you move around. Uh, we have a few. There's several junctions, isn't there? You know, if you come out of work, er, this is not an interesting conversation. Yes, we have stop signs, is what I'm going to say. I was going to direct Erin to the notice. If you go down to the main road outside work, like you're going to go to Darlington, that's a stop sign there, like a three-way junction. Uh, but we, we usually have. Um, do you know why it is? Right? Should we get into the why we have roundabouts? Because a lot of our junctions are not just cross sections. They're like three or four different roads all coming together from different directions. So it'd be hard to have like big junctions. So I think that's why we have roundabouts. I know it's thrilling content for you guys. Uh, Anne says it's pretty common here in the US as well, moaning about the weather. Uh, Susan says in Minnesota during summer, we love to complain about the bugs, especially the mosquitoes. That's a good one. Do you have like, do you, you guys have some pretty big like flying bugs as far as I'm aware. Is it like in, Florida, that's what I was going to say. I remember going on like holiday and having like a little thing that you like batted them away with, I'm sure, in Florida. Fly squatty, yeah, which is something. Uh, Carrie said, it's, ooh, it's taking a bit of a twist, isn't it, this show, Debbie? It's taking a bit of a turn. Um, Carrie says, I have to always make sure my tri blends are in light, medium, dark order too, and my colours have been arranged in rainbow order. Hello, Ooh. Carrie, yes. Rainbow order, I think so, yes, please. Uh, Rhonda says there's a fast lane, there is a fast lane, supposedly. Uh, the left, the, the cars in the left lane are supposed to be for the faster cars, but no one seems to remember that. Yes, yeah, so in the UK, the right-hand lane is for, far, like, if you're overtaking people. So on the freeway, which is, or the motorways we call it, you need to have three or four lanes. You keep to the left, Debbie, don't you, as much as you can, and you go around people. And if you're in the wrong lane, you get flashed and beat and people yep. make you move over. Yep. You can actually get fined for uh, hogging the middle lane, you know, Debbie. Can you yeah, really? Yeah, if you don't stay to the left, uh, then you can get a fine. In fact, Fiona, uh, I know I put a status on last night moaning about people sitting in the middle lane. So there you are. That's what we love to whinge about. <laughs> what I don't understand, though, is those people that flash you in the middle lane, when you're in the middle lane, and bear in mind sometimes you, you have to sit there because there's you know, traffic in the other lane that you can't get back into. Um, what I don't understand is those people that flash you, they sit in the middle lane. They don't move. They stay there themselves, and I why just don't, don't understand around? that. I just think, why do you think it's okay oh, to Debbie, flash and beat you me? You sound like, if you're getting flashed in the middle lane, you sound like one of those middle lane drivers. No, I'm not. I promise Debbie, I'm not. I promise I'm not. Promise? Okay. No, I promise you I'm not. But it just really Sorry, annoys the me that I, if, they're, if I'm there, they flash me or they beep at me or hand signals rather rude acting signals oh. um it really annoys me that then they sit there so i'll have moved over Debbie, if you are getting flashed yes beeped yes. and rude hand signals i mean i want to investigate this a bit further because i'm pretty sure there might be something not quite right about no! the driving no! i mean i've never been flashed beeped or had rude hand signals waved at me in the middle lane for just driving the correct speed in the middle lane <laughs> 
no, I promise you, mm, I am okay. a really sensible driver as well. Um, it took me a lot. Do you know what I'm saying that? Because sensible sounds like really slow middle lane driving. No, to me. no, okay. no. That's my okay. mum. That's my mum. She's a right. little turtle. I always said to her, she's like a little toy toys. And I keep <laughs> saying to her, mum, get in that left lane. Get in that left lane quick. Because I'm like, you can't sit here 40 mile an hour down motorway. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I do. But no, oh, well, okay. she's not watching. Right. She'll, she'll, she'll go mad with me. Uh, but uh, no, I'm a very sensible driver. It. Um, I was 35 when I passed my driving test, not because... I thought you were about to say you were doing 35 in the middle lane then. No, I thought, gosh, no wonder no. you were getting flashed. No, I was 35 years old when I passed my driving test. How many times uh, did you take it? First, it was my first oh, time. Debbie, yeah, it was my first time. Uh, but I, I, it took me a long time because it was expensive. Do you know, bringing up kids, it was expensive to have the driving lessons. So when I got my licence, it means a lot to me. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not prepared to lose it. So mm. I am a sensible driver. I am awesome. indeed. Right, Joe. So I've moved on from my floors. You can see how beautiful they're um, coming together. And obviously, when the alcohol evaporates even more, you get that more true colour. Uh, but I'm just going to carry on because I want to just do this floral here. And then I'm going to do my lantern as well. So okay. we're just going to continue that um, ethos that I've taught you there uh, and talked to you about using your alcohol pens use your line work there as um you know where to put your your shading down but again i'm starting with the lightest color and i'm saturating the whole of that area with that light color do and you know the other thing we love to moan about in the uk debbie go on then it's hilarious uh we love to moan about people moaning <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe those people are moaning about that again. I wish they'd stop moaning. Honestly, all they do is moan. <laughs> We're great at that. We are sorry, Debbie. I'm sorry. Debbie's just going to go back. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I just, I, I'm trying to not make you laugh, uh, Debbie. I just, but I just can't help myself. I'm just mischievous, aren't I? I really, really am. <laughs> like a little adult toddler. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, keep them coming in to me. Uh, of course, you can in all the usual ways. Crafters TV across on Facebook, Crafters Companion on YouTube. Make sure you boop, hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, and remember, another great show coming up for you later today. It's going to be Cartload. Not any old Cartload, I hear you cry. A discount Cartload. Uh huh. A double discount Cartload. Aha! Uh -huh. A double discount cartload for you uh, with myself and Craig and there's loads and loads of great things on it. There's actually loads of great deals on um, like consumables and things you might want to get stocked up on as well as Hunky Dory. Uh, we've got a uh, Inspiration Magazine collection in there for you. Uh, plate combos, there's everything. Everything you could watch. Watch, want even. Sentiments too. Uh, absolutely loads of brilliant stuff coming your way in that. Uh, Julia's back in the studio. I hope you haven't got your phone with you, Julia. Oh dear, what did she do? <laughs> oh, what? what did I miss? <laughs> She's actually coming to see if, see if we want a drink, so uh, oh, all gosh, is forgiven, yes, Julia. Please. Yes, please, <laughs> cup of coffee, please. Yes, thank you. Just milk, no sugar. Sweet enough, Julia, as you know. Uh, uh, oh, she's an angel. Did you wake up call today? I was sat on the couch over there, and there was this odd buzzing, and I thought, is it coming out of the iPad? What's going on? <laughs> and I knew, you know, I thought I was losing my mind, Debbie. And then all of a sudden, I could hear, ping, 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 ping. <laughs> ping, 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 ping. <laughs> and I was thinking, what on earth is that? And then we got word, Julia's lost her iPhone. She can't find it anywhere. So it was Julia's iPhone vibrating, and she was trying to buzz it from her watch. Ping, 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 ping. <laughs> Turns out, <laughs> She'd left it in the cupboard over there. She oh, even bless sent out. Her. She even sent out a whole company email saying to everyone in the company saying she'd lost her phone. Could anyone see it? And then she found it. And then it turns out it was going <laughs> off in here in the studio. It's quite hilarious. Quite hilarious, wasn't it, Erin? Oh, for her to lose it in a cupboard. God love her. She must have popped it out. It's one of those things, isn't it? You, I, I don't know if it's a lady of a certain age. Oh, sorry, Julie. I didn't mean that in a horrible way. Oh, oh. Oh, I meant, as in Daddy. like, cause, no, 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 because Julie, Julie won't mind me saying this, but it's like, ladies of certain ages, you forget things a little bit easier than you normally do. Well, I'll tell you what, I must be a lady of a of certain that. age then, because I forget everything, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> You are a one. Uh, Cheryl King says, uh, yeah, Debbie, driving is a privilege and some people forget that. <laughs> and there you are. That's you told. Uh, Sally says, oh, no, Joe has broken Debbie. Uh, oh. It's usually the other Debbie I break, isn't it? Yes. She, pff, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that giggle. Oh, I tell you what, you should definitely tune in on Saturday uh, because there's an awesome play of right? And the story 
read by yours truly. I'm going to see if I can get that bedtime story gig on CBeebies after recording that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's uh, going to be really, really fun. Uh, I believe it's Becky and Debbie Fisher on uh, Saturday. So make sure you join them for Play Your Crafts Right. Uh, it's a very difficult one this week is all I'll say. Oh, um, it's so hard, that storytelling. It's it is, really it? hard, yeah. Really I can't, I'm not very good at retaining information, Joe, so... Uh, but I think Debs will do really well on that. I yeah, think she I will. do. I think that's right up her street. I think she might be slightly distracted by the story, though, too. If you... Fair. Oh, please tell one. me you've not done a story of the bird... Of the bird... Thing. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. I'm not, don't laugh, Debbie! Debbie, do not laugh! You know... <laughs> <laughs> oh, now she's gonna cough. There we go. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Sorry, Debbie. Sorry. Um, Debbie asked me to be fair, didn't she? I, I, I didn't offer the, uh, the information up willingly. Uh, I hope you're all following along. We will check in with you uh, again really, really soon. Uh, <laughs> I said nothing. I said absolutely nothing. Uh, and um, yes, I hope you are all keeping up. If we don't get a chance for you to send the pictures in at the end of um, this show, uh, then don't worry. Uh, you will be able to send them in and we'll show them in the later cartload show uh, too. So if we uh, need to, we'll do it then. Should we run out of time? I've told everyone about your phone, Julia. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, Debbie, don't laugh. That wasn't even that funny, Debbie. Oh, it's just the, <laughs> it's just the story. I can't wait to tune in on that day. I'm going to be tuning in because don't put Debs out. She's not going to stand a chance. No, she's <laughs> if not. You're telling she's that gonna story. Giggle. She's going to giggle all the way back to bed. Oh, again. bless her. Oh, Idiot. Now, I'm just going to explain with my lantern so you can see what I'm doing with this. I'm laying down my palest colour. Thank you very much, Julia. Laying down my, per my, per my palest colour there. And then what I'm going to do is to create that curvature on your lantern to give it a little bit more of a realistic feature. I'm going to go in with the dark one from that shade. So this is the pale pink shade, that darker one. So this is the PP4. And I'm just literally taking around the edge of each one of those domes there. And it creates an illusion again of... Um, <laughs> uh, texture? Thank shape, you. Yeah, uh, uh, dimension. Shape, dimension. Shape. So then I'm going to go back in with that next dark of the, the pale blend, the pale pink blend. And again, I'm just putting a few little light strokes down. Not too many, just a few little light strokes. And then going back in with that pale one. And just gives it that little bit of that preserving the highlight. And then I'm going to go in with the mid-tone and I'm just going to go underneath each one. Oh, nice. Of there. And it creates that little bit of an illusion and you can see that. And if you're not happy, go back in with that dark one and just build back up around each one of those. And what it does, Joe, is it creates that illusion and a few little strokes at the bottom. It creates the illusion. I don't know if you can see there now how that's coming together. Yeah. It gives it that uh, 3D element to it. It's not flat colouring, if that makes sense. I hope no. that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, just do that. So, if you're not happy with it, go back out into it. And that would be applying the same to your florals as well. But you can see just how oh, lovely gorgeous, that's Debbie. looking. So, and that's just me. And I'm not a colourist, Joe, by any standards. Well, I'm not you a colourist. Like, me. Oh, bless you. But what I'm just going to finish off now is with the, um, the brown, where's my brown gone? My gold brown blend. I'm going to use the lightest tone. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Sorry. The light is such. Do you want to? We, I, I could talk over you crafting. <laughs> should we do that? Debbie's going to use the lightest brown and she's going to add a little bit of texture on the branch and the feet. There we go, see? <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with that mid tone to go over those areas and it creates a little bit of that, again, that shading, that element of um, light source nice. on the branch to give it that more realistic. And again, of course, you could go in with your dark one and just go back in and what that does is it just literally lifts the branch so that's that's exactly perfect perfect um perfect partnership there joe perfect partnership so again i'm going to go in with that light tone just around the branch i use the gold um the gold which was the gold gold uh, gold yellow blend on awesome. the beak uh, but again it's entirely up to you your color choice you can you know choose your color choice um however you wish to do so uh, but again just using the colours 
to highlight the uh, dimension, that light source, uh, again, to give you that realistic uh, feel to the branch because shading would be in that area. So can you see how that comes together, Joe? Uh, and then I'm just going to finish off. Um, <coughs> I think I'll use my uh, gold yellow blend okay, okay. and just pop that down onto his claws. Um, and again, I'm not going to mess about doing you know, light, medium and dark on that because it's so such a little area to colour. It doesn't need a lot there. But there you go. Oh, <coughs> so gorgeous. that, oh, I've just missed an area. <coughs> oh, what have you missed? I've missed my tassel at the bottom. Oh, Debbie, you How can't can have a naked tassel? tassel. Can't have a naked tassel. So I'm going to go in with that tassel and go at, uh, that was my mid, weren't it? Yeah, and then my dark. There you go, Joe. Now, all we're going to do to finish this off <coughs> is one of our lovely, I mean, something I've done for years when I've been colouring. Just want to give it a little pop. So I've taken my ice grey blend, and you'll see Craig do this a lot because it's one of his favourite techniques he absolutely loves. And all I'm going to do is go around each individual stamp area with that grey, and it just literally makes the image pop a little bit, takes away some of that harshness of the white, but just literally, and I've chosen the lightest shade there, but I want you to go around all of your stamped image and then what we'll do is we'll do a bit of cutting but i think we need people to catch up for this element joe so i'm just going to continue yeah absolutely to do uh, all this before we do the, the do so the cutting just, are you going to go around all three images all three images all three images i want you to go around leave you this blank but i want you to go around all three images and i guess this is optional stamped. this bit is it debbie Optional. If you want to look, if you want that stark white, then absolutely you can do. But I'm I'm with Craig on this, and I have done this. I've been colouring, like I said, I'm not a colourist, but I love colouring, and I've been doing it for a fair few years now. And it's something I've always done. In uh, before I had my Spectrum Noirs, it was a different uh, set of alcohol pens that I used, and I used to use one that was called Tea Green around the edge uh, to make it pop. Um, but I do love the grey. I've seen. Uh, Craig used grey such a lot and I just thought you know what I love that grey I think it looks really effective so I don't obviously I don't use the other pens now Remind anyway which grey it was please Debbie this one is the ice grey blend and it's the lightest tone awesome. the IG2 and again IG2. all I'm doing it, I don't know why it, it reminds me of like I don't know, the name reminds me of something. Yeah, like R2-D2, IG2. <laughs> now I am going to go around on the inside as well of the image and just be careful when you're doing this bit because the last thing you want to do is spoil your colouring so don't be going over the areas that you've coloured just go around the outside and I'm doing that with all of those fantastic and again on the inside so you can see now that just makes it pop that little bit gives it a little bit of a shade um, and again I'm going to do that same with this one as well Debbie's colouring is beautiful oh, in capitals, it says Dieta. I absolutely agree with you. I know you say you're not a colourist, but I think you are, Debbie. I, I, I love colouring. It's something I've had to, I've had to take my time with, Joe. I'm not going to lie. It's not something that came natural to me. Yeah, but I think you've done it now. You are a colourist. I wish, I think we're not going to let you say you're not a colourist. <laughs> I think we can go, let's go with self-taught colourist. Yes. How about that? Self-taught, yes. And of course... The amazing Leanne Chivers, what I've learnt from Leanne whew, and Fiona, um, it's worth its weight in gold. It is. And there's loads of tutorials about all things colouring on the Spectrum Noir area of our website as well as the uh, Crafter TV area of our website because of course you've got all of those Colour Me Happy shows over there and there's what, there must be what, 60, 60 odd of them now to watch back because we have uh, a colouring show for you every single Friday, 7pm in the UK, 2pm on the East Coast, 11am on the West Coast. Make sure you join us for that. That'll be me. That's tomorrow. <gasps> it's my first Colour Me Happy in about three or four weeks, you know. Ooh. What? Mm. Ooh, 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 you got, is it Debs? Uh, yep. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Uh, oh, is it Craig? It's Craig, I think, isn't it? Craig, yes, it'll be yeah, Craig. Craig. Yes, we are Craig. It's Craig because, yes, and he's got some. He's got. Oh! Oh, what was that? Oh! There's a goodie bag. Oh, I love a goodie bag. Love Can't, a goodie I'm bag. I'm not allowed to tell you that the deals for tomorrow's Colour Me Happy show will be live already on the website. I'm not allowed to say that. You're not meant to say that. I know. You're not meant to say I didn't that. say it. I just said I'm not allowed to say it. But you said it anyway. <laughs> oh, gosh, Debbie. What are you like? <laughs> what am I like? 
Right, so that is all Beautiful. our colouring done. Now, we've got a dye to cut this bit out, so no fussy cutting with this one. So we'll do that in a moment. But Joe, my coffee's going cold and I really do fancy a little bit of a swig. Oh, you I have can. a swig. Thank you very you much. We'll come back to doing this next bit in a moment. We'll, we'll let everyone have a little bit of a catch up then in that case, Debbie. So uh, let me show. We've got some other things on the show that I'd like to share with you, actually. So I've got uh, the guillotine, which is this one just here. Uh, if you want to go for this, or the guillotine, as you guys call it stateside, I know. Guillotine. I do declare. Uh, 8.75 inches, this one. That's going to come in my new catchphrase, you know. I can just, I can just sense it. 19.99 or 27.96 if you want to go for that. Now, we've got the stamp and die storage folder, which is this one just here. You also get a three pack of the, um, you get a three pack of the magnetic uh, sheets uh, and you get a free, which is for your dies. And then you get a free set of the magnetic panels as well, which is awesome. So you get three magnetic sheets and three magnetic uh, acrylic panels in there for your stamp. These are amazing quality, these. They really are, and great for traveling. And the thing is, it is your stamps and your dies, they're gonna last your lifetime, as long as you look after them and store them properly, which is exactly what this is going to do for you. Right, we're gonna move back into, ooh, the collection. Uh, so let me just grab for you the paper pad first, because I know a lot of you will have bought the uh, main collection when we launched it, and have no doubt started to burn through the paper pad already. You get four sheets of each of the designs that I'm gonna share with you, and they are, as I like to say, double A sides, uh, because what you've got here is this side is um, coordinated beautifully to pull out and draw in the colors on the opposite side. So you've got this one just here, I love the one with the parrots on there and then the little pagodas underneath. <gasps> Isn't this gorgeous with the uh, dragonflies and the birds in there? Yeah, you can see that lots of little dragonflies are in there. But then you've got that, this one with the lovely per pergolas. Uh, that one there, I love that big bold florals. And then on the other side, you've got the um, parrots. You're getting four sheets of each of these. This one would work well if it was fussy cut as well. Love this one here with the cranes, the beautiful mustard floral. The, this is the one that Debbie's used in the craft along here. Another one with the border. Uh, then we've also got this one with the florals. And that one is gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, it's like a beautiful, I just love the tones in that. So you've got that. If you want to go for an extra one of those, you can. 12 99 or 15 95 If you want to go for the main collection, of course, you are going to get that included. You could always add another one uh, in there if you wanted to. Let me share with you that main collection, because what you're going to get, of course, is the frame die, uh, which is this one just here, as you can see. Uh, you are, of course, going to get the beautiful birds, which is what Debbie's used here in the craft along. You're also going to get, as well, the um the temple or the pagola pagoda pagola pagoda uh you know the one the temple uh you've also got the lanterns here and the lanterns with the dies in there but also the separated uh, outside edge you can cut them in or you can cut them out of uh, out it's completely up to you uh you've then got this one here uh which is the embossing folder and then finally this one here which is the sentiments uh, 54 99 or 89.99 is your price you can use your club inspired discount uh, 43 40 for under 44 pounds to get all of that is incredible value i think you know the paper pad could be almost 20 pounds on its own i mean it's on a great price individually 71.99 if you are stateside uh, platinum members in the uk you're actually saving more than you're spending on this which is brilliant right I think we better go and check back in with Susie, don't you? Make sure she's okay, see how she's getting on across there. I hope the humidity hasn't gotten to you, Susie. How's it all coming along? Hi, I'm in my own colouring coma. Ah, oh, okay. How, how's it going? I'm not colouring. Oh, well, it, you could have fooled me. Boom, look at that. Ooh, Ooh that is beautiful. I ah. hot, darker. Do you know, I love I it. I love the colour choice yeah. of your lantern and your flowers. That is stunning, isn't it? Yeah, that the gorgeous, red Joe? is exquisite, yeah, Susie. Absolutely. It's looking absolutely awesome. Because my, my background paper for the red one is, is the yellow with the dark red in it. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. So. Really gorgeous. Yeah, great colour combo. Loving that, Susie. Well, I won't distract you too long. I'm not going to uh, bring you out your colouring coma just yet. Uh, we'll come back to you in just uh, in, in a little while. Uh, right then, um, anything, nothing uh, too important, I'll come to those in a second. Uh, we're going to give you a little bit more of an opportunity to get yourself caught up, so we'll share with you uh, all the exciting ways we ship our products to you uh, if you are stateside and also the details of Club Inspire. Take a look. 
had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Hi, I'm Sarah from Crafters TV and I'm here to show you how you can get the best deals and shop while you watch during our shows. The best way to watch us is always on Crafters TV. So head over to our homepage and go to Crafters TV home where you can see all of our shows plus exclusive offers and even shop while you watch. Now if you want to get involved and comment along you can head on over to our community pages. Come say hello, ask us some questions and chat along live with us. Or you can watch us on YouTube. Simply head to our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Got a smart TV? You can even airplay our shows direct onto your big screen or stream us live through YouTube. We're constantly adding new and exciting shows to our schedule. So don't forget to check in. It's never been easier to have us in your living room. It's always fun here at Crafters TV, so come join us as we create every day. Everyone's loving Susie's colour combo as well as our Debbie's as well. Uh, Hannah says, don't know why Debbie says she's not a colourist. Her colouring is amazing. Debbie, what beautiful colouring. The shading gives that 3D effect beautifully. Uh, and um, yes, Liz talking about cleaning snaps. I'll ask Debbie that uh, before the end of the show. Right, what's next then, Debbie? So um, what I'm going to do is separate them now. So we're going to just get your scissors and I want you to just um, separate your uh, things. Now I'm going to close in with there because what I want to do is create myself a little um, uh, uh, sentiment. So I'm just going to pop that to one side for the time being. Um, this one, of course, has its own um, uh, die. So I'm just going to just separate that for a second just to bring that one in because these lanterns, I, I do know, Joe, I adore these lanterns absolutely adore them but they have their own dies to be able to cut out so when you're popping this on you simply just fit it around your lantern and i'm just gonna make sure that i've got that evenly done before i actually pop some low tack tape onto it but you can run these and these are lovely because they run through your um mini as well as your midi Perfect. as well as your gemini uh, machines as well so i'm just gonna hold it into place i think that looks fairly central top part and the bottom part always a top tip there when you're using these dies uh, because they're the bits that are, are likely to move um but that's that's what i would recommend and then just run that through your die cutting machine and that will cut your lantern out perfectly as well joe so without having to do any fussy cutting of course oh how many plates have i got here oh far too many don't need that many oh debbie don't need that many in fact i don't even think i need that let's go in with that first and let's see if that combination will work uh, just there so um but yes they'll go through your mini your midi your machine your jo junior your big one and including your larger one as well i'll just see if that's cut through without the extra pressure yeah it didn't it didn't need uh, it didn't need the magnetic shim so you take that off you just pop that out at the bottom and the top and there you go you've got your uh, perfectly die cut uh, lantern beautifully and that gray shade around there as well just gives it another little bit of an extra element so that's that part done but then we're going to take a scissors for this next bit joe so um a choice of scissors to be fair it's entirely up to you what you feel more comfortable with do you feel comfortable with your uh, little snippers i personally do especially when I you're like working i like the medium size ones. yeah i like the medium but i have sets, got to I use the medium for everything do you know what my big set are what's that my kitchen scissors Oh. I use them as my kitchen scissors as a big yeah. set. 
Yeah, I, I love these scissors. They work for paper crafting, for sewists. Um, I need to get myself a new set of medium scissors though, Joe, because I've managed to bust them. Oh no, what did you I do? I know. Uh, tried to cut wire with them. Oh dear. I mean, the fabulous scissors, but I think I'm a little bit um, being optimistic there, expecting them to cut not just a little bit of wire, right. a really a thick big chunky wire. wire. <clears throat> a big chunky wire, yes. Debbie, so, what are you like? I know, Joe, I know. So, all I'm doing with this is a little bit of fussy cutting. I'm turning the paper and trying to keep my scissors as still as possible when we're doing this little part. Uh, but again, um, snippers or the baby ones of the family, Joe, I absolutely the love. I absolutely love fussy cutting. You know, I'm someone that doesn't consider myself a crafter, Debbie, but I love fussy cutting. Do you? Do you know when I cut my notes out for the show? Yeah. I get quite finickety about getting it in line. And when I do the <laughs> corners, the corners have to be rounded. I can't have square corners on my notes. I know. It's what simple are you things like? that bring me pleasure, isn't it? Yep, it is. <laughs> it definitely is. Now I'm going to trim this down, make life a little bit easy for myself rather than trying to handle uh, quite a bit of paper there. So again, choice of scissors. You can use your big ones if you feel more comfortable. Uh, but again, I'm going to use uh, my smaller ones. And again, I'm just going to turn the paper rather than my scissors where possible. Um, it just makes for an easier cut. But there is little elements on here where we will need to use our craft knife. Uh, so uh, the best craft knife for the little pieces here in the middle are your swivel craft knives. Um, so you'll, I'll show you the difference between the two in a second when I've just done this for sickle tin jaw. Okie doke. Lots of you uh, still chatting away. Very quiet in the comments. I think a lot of people are coming towards the end now, Debbie. So everyone's beavering away, uh, not doing much chatting. But that's a great sign during a craft room, cause it, means it does. Does that mean everybody's no working questions. away? Yeah. They might have mm -hmm. got lost in their own colouring comas. Maybe. They might be taking notes. Yeah. Uh, for when they, you know, because I know not everybody can craft along at the same time as we do. And people like to play back on them. I've done that myself. Yeah. A lot of, so I know that a lot of our viewers, Debbie, our crafty friends, like to watch it through first time yeah then come back and then start it again and craft along there's yep. no right or way wrong uh, there's no right or wrong way of doing it i think as long as you get it done uh you do you as i like to say and remember you can watch our shows back anytime every single one of our crafters tv shows that we've ever done is available to watch across on our website they're all there i mean i think we've worked out there is like months and months and months if you were to watch it continuously debbie of crafters tv show liam did work it out a little while ago and i can't did remember he? now what it was I might ask him again if he'd do the calculation, yeah, because he knows all the shows that are on the system there. Pam Craven's been working on a, uh, a catalogue. You know, Pam Craven has documented every show we've ever done and what's, what was what? on the show. Oh, yeah. wow! Uh, and I know that Sarah's been speaking with her about actually elect ele electronalising it. No, a digitalising it. There we go. Electronalising it. What? Is that a new word, Joe? Say what? Say who? Uh, Digitalising it and trying to get it so we can like incorporate it somehow. Yeah. Um, wow. But you watch it all back. Watch it, or you can watch it back where you're watching now if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. YouTube's quite nice as well because it arranges things into playlists, which is brilliant. And do you know that each expert's got their own playlist as well, Debbie? So you can watch all of your shows or all of Craig's shows, or all of Sarah's shows. They're all in different list orders. Oh, I don't think I'd want to watch mine back. <laughs> but I like, I like the idea. I think that's oh, absolutely fab. Debbie. Absolutely fab idea. Now, uh, you can see, if you want to leave this solid, absolutely you can. But I do like the idea of cutting out those little pieces. Now, I did say that the best craft knife for this is the little swivel one. Yep. So it's not the flat edge one. Perfect on your glass mats because it acts as the... Um, easy glide to get this part done and all i'm going to do is i'm going to follow that gray scale do you know the gray lines that i've done and because it's a swivel blade it means i can turn my card and especially on the glass mat makes this really quite easy now with a straight blade it's a little bit harder to do so i'm just going to take that out there so you can see i've cut out my little piece and this this particular craft knife please do take care though if you're using your craft knife because i don't want no sliced fingers it is a sharp blade, we must remember that. Uh, so this would not be suitable for children. Uh, so please don't give that to your kids to use. It is a blade at the end of the day. Uh, if you weren't as confident with it, Debbie, I'm guessing a self-healing or a soft mat would be easier, would it? Than yes, self-healing mat, mats, perfect. I prefer my glass mats because of the easy glide. 
Um, and again, that's just down to me dexterity problems that I have. Do you know, with me carpal tunnel, yep. it makes it a little bit easier for myself. So that's why I use my glass mat uh, when I'm doing this. But again, you can go in and it just, it just gives it that lovely finishing touch just by adding those little elements on. And I do prefer to cut out these parts jaw uh, but again using your glass mat it gives you the and the swivel it just gives you that ease of use and i don't have to put a lot of pressure onto it either because it glides so perfectly with the glass mat Brilliant. so that's that part done so all we need to do now is get our sentiment cut so just grab your uh, your um guillotine for this part and what we're going to do is we're just going to square it off. Now, I tend to use, when I'm doing this, especially if I've got it on um, odds and sods, of because I'll be totally honest with you, Joe, when I'm stamping sentiments, it's my scraps that I usually put okay. it on. Uh, so for that, I use my stamp uh, as an idea of where to go. So when I talk about that, I mean I'm using my guillotine line to help me get a really nice straight edge. Can you see that's yep. looking really quite straight? And that's just using my guillotine. So there's no right or wrong way with this one, depending on your sentiment that you're choosing. Uh, so I can't give you the measurements for this because because obviously just that will depend on what you're you using. Do you situation? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And I know some people like to do those tail end ones, you know, where you put your Ooh, little like tails those, like on. little banners. Yeah, little banner. Uh, but again, this is what I just do whenever I'm using it. And I use me guide with the stamp. That's how I do it but I want to put it onto a little mat and layer so I'm going to use a bit of the scrap paper that I had earlier and I say scrap I'm going to use some of this beautiful paper here and I'm going to use uh actually I'm just going to pop it on that actually there you go just going to pop it on that so I'm going to pop a little bit of glue down I'm going to pop that on and then I'm going to use me again just use my guillotine as a guide there we go uh, to just trim that off so that little section is something that you probably do freehand yourself but again I just use my guillotine to help me guide it into place where I want to get my perfect mats and layers there we go excellent trim that off. it's one of just those tools that you eye. need uh, yeah it is it's a Debbie by eye special but you can see that that's perfect and it, because I've put it onto that paper as well it just matches really beautifully onto there Joe so we've got now our sentiment we've got our birds we've got our floral and we've got our lantern we've got Excellent. our card base um just grab your gems now i've chosen some gems we've got plenty of gems on the website you may have already got some in your year of crafts or from your unky dories or anything like that um now this is entirely up to you you can glue these pieces down with either your hot glue gun or foam pads uh, but it's entirely up to you what you're going to put this down with now i would have used my glue hot glue gun but guess what debbie forgot to do plug it in plug it in I haven't plugged it in. What a silly billy oh, I am. No. I've, I know, exactly. And it'll do, it takes do? a while to warm up. So Ch You're going to chunky it? Um, no, I'm going to fold oh, pad it. Get me. Look Get at me. you. Fold What's pad happened? again. I know. It's a, it's a change me doing all these foam pads. Now, do you know, you could, you could actually bring this piece back into the equation if you wanted to, and you could slip it as a little backdrop uh, to offset your uh, design if you want to do. You could actually just pop it on there and have your birds sitting on the top to act as a little resist pattern there, because I think that looks quite nice. Uh, but I'm just going to go straight in with my birds over. So I'm going to okay. take but you're not my... going to stick it on that way around, though, are you? Why, what have I done? You're going to move your card Oh, the my way. days, it's a good <laughs> job. You <laughs> spotted that I've joke. seen it. I wasn't going to let you make an issue. I mean, Phew. I don't know many upside-down flying birds. I would have let you know before you stuck it down, Debbie. Don't you worry. Oh, I'd, I'd, sure, I'd, you saved me. It. You saved me right at the very end. Uh, so I've just given it a little, because I've got a dome feature, I've just shaped it. Now you can shape it with your fingers if you haven't got a bone folder, uh, but it just gives it that little shape and it fits around the dome perfectly. So I am going to trim down my foam pads because I have got some quite chunky ones here. Not going to quite work, <laughs> but what I'm going to do is pop a little on his tail and some on the back of the flowers as well, Joe. So let's just take that off. Just to say, if anyone's uh, moved ahead of us or is a little bit ahead, Debbie, and they're finished up, 
You can get your pictures into us right now, studio at craftscompanion.co.uk. Um, if you are finishing around the same time as us, or maybe you are finishing a little bit later than Debbie, uh, then don't worry, because what you can do is you can send them into us uh, in the, the two hour break between this show and Cartload, and then we'll share a load in Cartload if we don't get to see them uh, in this show. But the email address you need is down there, studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. Love it when we get to see what people have crafted along, don't you, Debbie? Oh, I, I do. It's my favourite bit. It is absolutely my favourite bit. Just realised I've put my phone pad too high up, so just bear with me a second, Joe. No In fact, let me just take that off before I stick it down, because I'm going to just trim it down on his tail. So I'm going to take my little scissors. This is why your little snippy scissors are absolutely a must-have, because it gets into those details. Uh, and that lovely image there. So again, I'm just going to pop those now into the center. That looks quite central, doesn't it? Looks yeah. central to me. Looks pretty central, yep. So I'm just going to get my fingers underneath and put the pressure down to make my foam pad stick there. So does that look central? I'm just going to do a by eye. Oh, it does, absolutely fine. And then again, I'm just going to do exactly the same with my lantern. So I'm going to pop my lantern, I'm going to pop the same little curvature with my floral and the same with my sentiment i'm just going to give it a slight curl but i put some um foam pads just on the end as well but again because i've got my big chunky ones i'm going to trim these down a little bit so one at either end and then we're going to pop that on this is the last bit of the deck oops <laughs> your friendship means the world to me but not upside down <laughs> uh, so again i'm just going to pop that on centralize that let's see if i've got that right let me just lift you've that been up. converted to foam pads according to hannah i Craig's have converted, isn't he? <laughs> it's craig it's craig's influence <coughs> excuse me and then again i'm just going to pop one on my lantern i'm going to stick that down in that top corner there we go and then i'm going to put my floral on there we go. So my little flower. Let's pop one on the back of the flower. Let's get... Oh, come on, don't let me down now. Have you noticed I've chopped my fingernails off? Oh, how come you've chopped them off? Uh, well, I've gone for uh, a small glittery nail to um, help me craft a bit better. Oh, OK. Uh, means I haven't been able to get to my nail technician. Right, OK. That's really the truth that behind it. <laughs> You, now, really, oh. <laughs> you really had us fooled there. <laughs> you thought then, didn't you? <laughs> so what I'm just going to do now is pop some gems on, and it's just that little finishing touch, and I'm just going to put a couple, um, like, gradient size ones. I like a bit of glitz and glamour just to finish it off with. Um, and I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. But now, oh, I can't believe it, Joe, but we've actually just got it in fully, literally, in the nick of time, uh, which I'm quite pleased about. There you go. So there you go. That is your craft along completed using uh, some elements of the Chinoiserie collection, which I just think is absolutely beautiful. And I hope you've enjoyed the craft along and I can't wait to see your pictures on what you've created and your uh, colour combos as well. Yeah, I can't wait to see everyone's pictures. We'll get them in and we'll get them shared in cartload. I just want to take you through uh, the gilding wax that we've got collection we've got available for you on the show. You actually get five of the colours there, uh, all five of them. Uh, you're saving 20%, you get one for free, which is awesome. So do grab that. Uh, I'll just uh, 47.96 or 67.96 if you are across the pond. Uh, now, I want to just share with you also that paper pad. A lot of you going for extra... Oh, no, wrong one. Sorry. What am I like? Uh, the the um, Centura Pearl deal that we've got for you. You've got the pale silver in there. You've got that gorgeous solar gold. Ten sheets of uh, ten seats in each of these. You just need to pick which ones you're going to go for. Any four of them for ten pounds or fourteen dollars, which is an excellent deal there as well. You've got this one, which is your uh, pale gold. We've got then the bronze copper, the green gold, which is awesome. Then I've got rose gold for you, and we've also got white gold for you there as well. Uh, right. Don't forget. Uh, you can uh, go through, the, I'm going to whiz through this really quickly. So if you want to go for the individual elements, then these are the details you need. You've got the frame, uh, you can go for the beautiful birds, the temple, the oriental lanterns, which are these ones. You've got the peony reefs, the pretty peonies, which are these ones just here. 
You can go for the 12 by 12 paper, paper which is gorgeous. Uh, or you can be going for the die cut toppers. Or of course, the best way to get the best value is to go for that full collection. Oh, we are fast running out of time, but let's whiz back across the pond uh, to the lovely Susie and see how uh, she's getting on over there. How's it going, Susie? I'm okay. I think I'm I think I'm good. Oh, well, I think you're, I think you're blooming brilliant, better than good. Offset your birds. That is beautiful. Oh, and use one of the toppers down there. Is that one of the topper sheets down the bottom? Did. It's the wrong colour though. I think I'm going to take oh, it Oh no, no, no. That looks beautiful, Susie. Do yeah. not put that down. That card is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous, Susie. I like the black one too. But oh, I didn't, oh, wow. I didn't to do all the colouring of the extra elements though. Wow. I love that you didn't just do one craft long. You did two at the same time. It's a testament to your talent, Susie. It really is. Uh, I've really loved having you on the show again, Susie. I've really hope we'll get a chance to chat again soon. Thank you, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, markers. They make the world a difference in your colouring. Yes, they oh really do, God. don't they? Big love to you across the pond, Susie. Uh, I'll speak to you really, really soon. Bye. Which Bye. Uh, so lovely is Susie, and that is a you know that is a pretty well stocked that craft room. I love how well stocked it is, but also how amazingly organised it is too. Would you like to get involved in one of our shows? Would you like to come on and join us for a craft long or a craft house or be a craft ambassador with us on a Monday? Anything of that nature? This email address along at the bottom of your screen just here, Crafters TV Guest at CraftersCompanion.co.uk is where you need to send those requests into. We're going to be back in a couple of hours' time, Debbie. Uh, thank you, massive pleasure as always. I'm coming over, Debbie. I'm yes. on my way because you I want you. Me I need it. <laughs> I go. need it. Thank there you go. very much. I'm glad you've enjoyed the craft along. It's been lovely to have Susie T with us as well. So if you do fancy joining us on one of our craft alongs or any of our shows, then obviously drop a line to us here at Crafters TV. But I'm off to head down to the. Uh, home i think i need a bit need of a well, duvet well hot water rest, bottle Debbie. and a bit of lm sip to go and uh, just have a recovery uh, so enjoy the show with craig later tonight it's uh, going to be a blast fantastic as always to spend some time in the studio with you debbie uh yes so don't forget to check out your baskets if you're going for anything in the show you've got a couple of hours now you can have a rest you can do some crafting it's completely up to you but don't forget about that double discount cart load coming up uh, 7 p.m in the uk 2 p.m east coast uh, which is 11 a.m west coast i'll see you there take care